Welcome to the Green Ninja series on climate science. My name is Eugene Cordero, and today we're going to have a brief introduction into climate science. We'll start with this question, climate change. Is it already happening? Well, observations from around the world confirm that the global average temperature, the global average sea level, and northern hemisphere snow cover are all changing in significant ways. Global average temperature, which comes from station measurements that have been going up, uh, you can see the especially over the last 30 or 40 years, the global temperatures have been rising. The sea level has also been showing a very steady increase. That's because of melting of land ice and also because the oceans, as they warm, they expand. And as the planet temperature continues to go up, the amount of snow continues to decline. Here's a chart showing uh, northern hemisphere a snow cover and how it's going down. There are many other indicators of a warmer world um, those include the decline of glaciers, temperature over land going up, snow cover declining, uh, permafrost retreating poleward, and trees shifting poleward and upwards, um, as well as species migrating poleward and upwards. We're seeing an earlier arrival of spring. Uh, the humidity of the atmosphere, because it's warmer, is going up. The temperature over the oceans in the troposphere the sea surface temperatures all rising, as I mentioned already, sea level uh, going up and the amount of sea ice declining as our ice sheets. These are all indicators that the planet's temperature is warming and it's very clear from measurements from all over the world from very different methodologies. As well as the ocean heat content, which is really the largest indicator of, uh, of a warming planet. So there's really no debate about the fact that the warming planet, that the Earth's temperature is warming. The question is, what is responsible? And uh, one of the key pieces to understanding this is looking at heat trapping gases like carbon dioxide. We can see that over the last thousand years, the concentration of carbon dioxide has been going up. Uh, in fact, it didn't do much for about 800 years. And then since the Industrial Revolution, the amount of CO2 has gone up. And today, it's almost 400 parts per million. Uh, that by itself, we would expect to warm the planet. Um, but there's other factors that contribute to climate change besides CO2, and it's important to pay attention to those as well. Of course, the sun is the largest driver of past climate, and any change in the sun's intensity will affect our climate. Things like volcanic eruptions, uh, turns out they also can cool the planet, and uh, volcanic eruptions are important. We're seeing land use change, the effect of deforestation, the effect of urbanization, those also can influence the climate system. Aerosols, which are tiny particles that you can see, for example, coming out of smokestacks or out of the back of cars, uh, those affect the climate system as well. In fact, they cool the planet. Um, so when you have a volcanic eruption or aerosols emitted from industrial pollution, those primarily have a cooling effect. So when we think about climate change, uh, it's not just CO2. In fact, we have to think of the natural changes versus human changes, the warming versus cooling factors. And you know, how do we tell what's most important? Is the warming stronger than the cooling or vice versa? Well, in order to answer this question, it's not obvious, it's not intuitive. So we have to use science. And I'll just remind you of, of one definition of science, which is a concerted human effort to understand how the natural world works. So we use data, observations, we use theory coming from physics and chemistry, and we put those together to try to understand you know, how the natural world works. So there is a strong consensus today among scientific organizations that humans are actually influencing our climate system. And this comes from the national, the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, which was uh, developed to inform our government about issues related to science about the U.S. National Research Council, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the American Physical Society, the American Geophysical Union, the American Meteorological Society, all of them say that the evidence is very clear that uh, humans are affecting our climate system and that we should take prompt action. In addition, there's a strong consensus among scientists. Um, a poll in 2009 said to scientists, do you think human activity is a significant contributing factor in changing mean global temperature? 
And when you ask scientists, the percentage who agree with that, um, with that statement, uh, scientists who publish uh, in the peer-reviewed literature, so climatologists who are active publishers on climate change, 97.5% of climatologists um, agree with that statement, basically that humans are affecting our climate system. So what are the lines of evidence that have convinced scientists and, and scientific organizations and that have convinced myself as a climate scientist myself? What are the lines of evidence um, that make us feel so confident about this? I'm going to share with you three of them. There's, there's others as well, but uh, these are the ones that, um, that I like to talk about and I think that are, are pretty clear indicators that uh, humans are having an influence. The first is radiative forcing. And radiative forcing is like a bookkeeping exercise where we look at the warming factors and cooling factors, we quantify them, and then we compare them uh, to natural changes as well. So for example, um, we look at how CO2 has changed over the last 200 years. And we see there's more CO2 in the atmosphere today than there was uh, 200 years ago. And that's causing a warming. Um, by a certain amount of watts per meter squared. And we look at other greenhouse gases as well, for example, methane, nitrous oxide, and we can compare CO2 contribution, for example, compared to methane. We also look at other factors like ozone changes, like uh, water vapor, um, the effect of deforestation, the effect of aerosols, um, and we can quantify all of them. And these are all the, nat the anthropogenic or human changes. And here we compare the natural changes. And over the last 200 years, the sun has become a little stronger, and that's warmed the planet. But when you compare the warming due to the sun with the warming due to CO2, you can see the CO2 contribution is much larger. So going back to the bookkeeping exercise, we can see in this case that the greenhouse gases are, are having a primarily strong warming influence. The aerosols are having a smaller but significant cooling influence. The total net result, though, is still warming, and it's much, much larger than anything produced naturally, for example, from the sun. And this allows us to quantify the warming and cooling factors. So this is called the radiative forcing calculation. We also can use global climate models to run experiments, and these are very sophisticated models similar to used in weather forecasting when you get the three-day weather forecast or the five-day weather forecast. We can do the 10 or the 50 or the 100-year climate forecast using the same uh, science-based models. And what we find is that if we run the model uh, for 100 years, the climate model, and the black line are the temperatures from observations, and the orange shading here are a whole bunch of climate models um, where we include natural factors, but we also include um, human factors like extra greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, we see that the models follow the observations pretty well. Not perfectly everywhere, but do a pretty good job for a 100-year predict prediction. But if we take out human contribution and we run the models for 100 years, but we don't have increases in greenhouse gases, we see that by the end of the century, the temperatures are much cooler than the observations, which again is this black line. And this suggests that, that without additional greenhouse gases, that our models can't reproduce the observations. So they indicate that the greenhouse gases are a real strong contributor especially over the last 40 years. Final piece of evidence I'll share with you today is something called fingerprint detection. And that when we increase greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, there's a certain fingerprint. Not all parts of the world are going to warm at the same rate. Some places are going to warm faster than others. And there's a certain signature to additional greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, just like there's a unique signature to solar, the effect of, on the climate system if the sun was to get stronger or if volcanic eruptions were to happen. They all have a certain fingerprint. And so when we go and look at observations, we can examine that fingerprint and try to match it. When we do that matching, we see that the observations today match the, the signature or fingerprint of additional greenhouse gas warming. They don't match volcanic emissions. They don't match the changes in sun they match extra greenhouse gases. Combined with this, we can see that the additional greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, because those greenhouse gases come from the burning of fossil fuels, and there's a particular isotopic um, signature, an isotope of carbon, a signature that is related to burning of fossil fuels, 
that, that extra CO2 that's in the atmosphere, um, we know that CO2 is coming from the burning of fossil fuels. It's not coming from a natural source. So these are the lines of evidence that have been put together that have convinced scientists, they convince me, they convince scientific organizations that our climate system is indeed changing, and it's because of humans. So the Earth's climate is changing. It's becoming warmer, it's becoming wetter in some places, drier in others, sea level is rising, and there's lots of other changes that are happening. They're very well documented. In addition, we have found that human activities are contributing to this warming, especially over the last 50 years. So over the last 50 years, the human contribution is by far the largest.